speak. And when we ever, whenever we do try to talk about it and describe it, um, that's always the challenge is to yeah, is. take into this material reality descriptions. And, the, and because we haven't actually been encouraged to do that since we were children, right. uh, actually we've been discouraged to do that. Uh, then it becomes language becomes really something. It's almost like a battle. Um, I, I myself go through that. I myself will, am an empath. I don't usually talk about that either. But, yeah. Uh, you know, and I, that has been positive and negative in my life. But at the same time, uh, I do think that at a certain level, you learn how to control that. And I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now, especially in Camelot, if I wasn't able to control that. Um, but what that does is mean that you're very, very open. And if you're going to describe the unseen world and you are very open, uh, language becomes very difficult. It, it, beca- it's, it's almost a barrier more than a facilitator, unfortunately. And, um, you know, some languages, some, you know, I, we speak English. Okay. English, in my view, is not the greatest language with which to try to, to, uh, I guess we're in a doctor's office here in the back. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Um, is, is not the best lang- you know, language in which to try to convey, uh, the unseen world. And, and so I think it's, it's, that's a whole other, um, you know. Cause they have to thing. use your language of what you know. <laughs> that's why I always say to Joe, I said, I'm, I tell him every once in a while, I'm so jealous. You seem to articulate everything that you say so well. And here I stumble through my words, except for when I'm tra- channeling. For what I understand, I, I'm pretty fluent when I channel. Oh, well, you sound perfectly, uh, you know, clear here as well. So perhaps it's it's your view of yourself as opposed to what's really oh, happening. Oh, that's a possibility. It took me a while to get out of that timid role. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, and, and that's a whole, whole other discussion. But, uh, what I'd like to talk about here now is, you know, what actually I think we're going to go to break. So let's go to break. Um, and see, I, I need to announce the, the song and, and we will be gone for about four minutes and then we will start the second hour. And thank you both for being uh, very patient and for participating in this with me. It's, it's a delight to have you here. Uh, the, so let's see. Um, to see if we're, this is kind of an unusual situation. So I don't, I am not able to hear the break music, so I don't know when it starts. Um, okay. It, it, now we're going to have a song by, uh, Benno Stanek. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's how we say the name, but I think it's Benno Stanek. And the word, the name of it is Take It Easy. And we'll be back in about four minutes. This is Arvajo Radio. This is Arvajo Radio. Hi, this is Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot, and we are back on the air and we have Joseph Mara and Terry Terry Ippoletti. Ippoletti. <laughs> okay, that was close. Uh, <laughs> yeah. this time we're getting there. Uh, at any rate, what I want to talk about this hour is is the information you're actually getting. And uh, Joe has said during the break that that you could even go into um, channeling on the air here. And and I actually you know, I wouldn't encourage that unless you, for some reason, you feel that that's, that's coming up and, and for you and you want to share that. So let's just leave that as an open door at the moment. Um, but what I'd like to talk about here is, first of all, let's, um, talk about, have, have Joe talk about what it is he is getting or both of you are getting. I'm not sure how you guys, you know, if you separate it out, if they're specific information you're getting from a certain entity and so on and so forth, how you want to talk about that? Uh, well, I guess we'll start by um, when we go into these channels, we always call upon the highest source and we call upon the highest protection, of course. And um, initially, we didn't know who was going to come through. Um, once we got beyond the angelic realm, then the ETs started coming in. And then once we started to acknowledge and know who certain ET groups were, we can now actually call upon them. 
And the, the ETs that we've called upon so far are the Mantis, the Adromanan, the Syrians, and anybody else? Seems like the Assyrians and the Andromedans are the um, most prominent ones that come through, especially the Andromedans even go out of their way to let me see what they look like. Um, the Syrians make me feel like I'm family. They have actually taken me on trips to see what, um, you know, kind of like flying trips. I'm not really sure what they are yet. Um, but, um, but I, I kind of just go, I just kind of go within and I let myself just be open to whatever truth that is out there. Cause I think that's what we're looking for is the truth. Right. And, um, even though it's sometimes I, I, I see it as a, as a higher dimensional reality. Right. And what they've told us, Carrier, that we are interdimensional beings and that uh, we all have, like you said, we can all tap into this. It's whether we want to take a look at ourselves and get rid of the karma and the cellular memories and all that kind of stuff, which can be hard at times. Another aspect is that there are different soul levels. So um, Terry knows a little more about this, but I know there's like the baby soul and then. Yeah, there's like the infant's. Um, I've been introduced to like the infant soul so that I could use it for therapy. And this is what I believe I really get more of is the health and wellness, like the therapy, therapeutic part of like tele, uh, telepathic type things. And so what happens is that I remember them teaching me something and they teach me a lot, tell you the truth. They taught me about looking within the people that I'm working with, like the, the, the infant souls, the, uh, what is it? The, um, baby souls, the young souls, the mature souls, and then, uh, and then the, um, the, the old souls. And you can almost see it in the way that, um, the energy flows, how they speak. Like I, I can see how that's happening now. I'm seeing a lot of like reincarnated, um, kids coming in at the age of, they're like 25 years old now that I can see how they're coming in from the sixties, from the 1960s. And it's just kind of like, there, you can see the different soul types that are within them. If that makes any sense to you. <laughs> so another thing is like uh, a lot of people ask, what is our purpose here? Like, what's the purpose of life? And like, why are we here? And a lo what I've been told is that uh, this is a schoolhouse. The earth is like a schoolhouse. And we're here to learn certain lessons about more so about spirituality, I believe. And once you have the acknowledgement that there's more than one dimension, like 3D, or 4D, which we're moving into, and we can get into that in a little bit. Um, but um, And you know that there's different soul levels. It explains why some of the people do what they do. If they're brand new baby souls, they haven't experienced this, be certain things before. So they're more apt to, um, I don't know, get into trouble maybe, more so than the uh, more mature soul. They're more needier. And they're needy. And, and uh, another thing is... Um, that some of the people that are here are considered uh, what they tell us are masters, and they don't actually have to be here at this particular time, but they volunteered to be here for a mission to um, help this transition that's going to be coming down the pike within the next few years. So once you get all this information, and of course I'm the type of person like, why, 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 tell me why this is, and, you know, after spending a year and a half, almost two years asking why, it all comes together to make sense to me. And but if if you only have one little piece to the puzzle, it doesn't make sense. So, you know, some people don't believe in interdimensional or 3D. Some people don't even believe in ghosts. Some people don't believe in E.T. So basically, if you can open up your mind to the possibilities and then just take all the information in and then make your own decision or your discernment, life can start making sense. OK, well, yes, absolutely. I agree with you. Uh, so. In terms of 2012 and in terms of what this transition is, obviously you guys are getting information in that level. Let's talk about that, what it is you're hearing from uh, your contacts. And if if you wouldn't mind, also tell us, if you give us a piece of information, if you're able to tell us who that came from, in other words, where what kind of entity and so on and so forth, uh, then that would be also valuable. 
So uh, let's start with Terry. And Terry, why don't you talk to us a 